Welcome everybody to Lighting Essentials. Don Gianetti here talking today with Brian Miller. Brian Miller is a photographer out of St. Augustine and uh, does a little of everything. Some commercials, some weddings, portraits, everything to stay alive. How is life in St. Augustine, Brian? Life is very hot lately. It's uh, July now in Florida, but life is good. Get, you guys get high humidity there, like in like 15, 20%, huh? Uh, I don't know the numbers, but yeah, it's a lot. I, <laughs> in fact, when I bring my camera gear out of my car and go to shoot outside, I have to wait and acclimate it because my lenses, the sensor, and everything will fog up almost immediately. I'm going to give you a hint. You know those styrofoam? Ice boxes, ice chests? Yes. Put your gear in the styrofoam ice chest. Uh, Leave it in the styrofoam uh, ice chest. When you get on location, take the styrofoam ice chest out of the car. For 10 minutes, leave the lid on. Take the lid off for 20 minutes, and you should be okay. The scary thing about that kind of, of uh, condensation is if it gets inside the lens, it can take a year to dry. Oh, boy. So, yeah, that was a uh, that was a tip from a friend of mine who shoots down the Florida Keys. <laughs> uh, he never he never travels with his gear anywhere but in that in that uh, in that box. So it's an issue, and always show up early because you yeah. never know. Yeah, when I was in Bermuda, I uh, I did not know this, and I walked outside with my camera, and I think it took it maybe 45 minutes before I could use it. <laughs> the resort kept the, the hotel room was like, uh, you know, 60 degrees. You could hang meat in there and uh, <laughs> hit, the, hit the door. And it was 97 with 95% uh, humidity. And you kind of go, what the heck? <laughs> so it's, it, uh, it's great to talk to you again. You were a project 52 member a couple of years ago and um, yeah. And several portrait classes. Yep. And uh, looks like uh, business is going. It was, it was really funny. And I, I opened up your 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 uh, um, page here and it was like, wow, I know these. I know some of these images. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been doing a bunch of editorial working for uh, I was in four magazines this, this past month. And last week was my busiest week I've ever had. Wow, that's great. That's seven seven editorial shoots in one day and five in another. And I had at least one job every day last week. Wow. Gosh. Um, you're, you're not on Facebook because on Facebook, uh, the general consensus is that nobody's hiring photographers and photography is dead. Did you not get yeah. a memo? I'm too busy to read and reply wow. to those articles. <laughs> See, that's probably it right there. <laughs> Jeez. I learned that from you. I learned that from Gary V. And just by doing, just just stop with the negativity and get out there yeah. and do it. Well, I'm glad you mentioned Gary V. I'm a big fan as well. I was a very <laughs> negative person most of my life, and uh, once I, I started to work on that, once I figured it out and started to work on it, wow, what a difference! So, what tell me what tell me what um, I mean. Saint Augustine is in a uh, sort of middle between Jacksonville and Orlando. Or Orlando, however you say it, um, and none of those are really big cities. So, what's it like as a photographer there? I mean, you got to imagine you're hustling like crazy. Yeah, hustling. Um, it's a it's a huge tourist community here because it's the oldest city in America, and there's all kinds of tourist attractions here. It's a beautiful city. It's on the water. You got beaches, you got history, you got pirate history. Pirates are the latest craze here. But um, lots of people visiting, so I end up doing a lot of consumer work. Families come to town, they look up a photographer, want to do a family session, or want to come here and get married as a destination wedding. Um, and along with that comes a lot of businesses that cater to tourists and are selling products. And It's just a little bit of everything going on. I haven't quite nailed down exactly what I'm going to do here, but I've been busy. It'll turn into something. That's great. Are you, are you doing any regional work, uh, getting outside of St. Augustine and into Florida itself? Yeah. Um, Jacksonville a lot. 
you know, a lot of the commercial work I've gotten is Jacksonville, but most of the editorial work has been local on a local level. Um, a little bit of Jacksonville. I'm just going to keep doing these things till they lead to something bigger. That's uh, cool. Any, um, any photo buds that you have down in there that you hang with? Uh, a handful of photo buds. Yeah. Um, well, you know, Tucker, yep. Tucker introduced me to you and P52 and the portrait classes several years ago. Um, he's busy. He's doing great. He's about to open his own gallery <laughs> wow. right here in town, which is pretty neat. Wow. So I, I can't wait for that. Yeah. It's something he's been wanting to do for a long time. Uh, it was it's so it's so great to um, see you guys just really um, breaking the mold and hustling and getting stuff done. Um, have you met Don Fidel yet up in Jacksonville? I have not. I mentioned him a couple times, and uh, yeah, I'm going to put him together with you. I think you'd really enjoy Don. He's a great guy, great photographer. Um, oh, it'd be great. I love meeting people. Yeah, I love um, meeting other photographers. So what is the, uh, what's the typical month for you pho photographically? Of like, I mean, I know because you're doing commercial and consumer and stuff. So um, it sounds like it's pretty exciting. You do a lot of different stuff, huh? It is. And some days I like it, some days I don't. Um, I feel like, you know, if I want to be the best wedding photographer out there, that's what I need to do solely. But there's days when I'm shooting food and... I think what I love most is editorial is going a lot of the local publications I work for will go to a business and profile the people and what they do. So I shoot the people, I shoot the products or their business, their environment, environmental <laughs> portraits. I just love that. Excellent. And part of the excitement is having no idea what, what's on the other side of that door when you walk in and having to figure out quickly <laughs> how to shoot it, how to tell their story. I'm glad you said that because for me that was all you know. I'm kind of an adrenaline junkie when it comes to that kind of stuff. I'm not going to bungee jump. I'm not that kind of adrenaline junkie. But artistically, <laughs> man, I just absolutely, I just love the fact that I don't know what I'm going to walk into, and yeah. and and then and then they're screaming at me that I got 20 minutes, and <laughs> uh, the create the the creativity muscle starts flexing really hard, so. That's it's always, the, you know, the chef. Every month I photograph a chef in a restaurant and they never know you're coming or they forget about it. And it's, that's the worst because there's so much pressure. Oh, yeah. Because, yeah, the chef is standing there going, I don't know anything about it. Of course, he does yeah. know all about it. He just forgot about it. Yeah. Um, how, how fun is that? <laughs> that's part of it that comes with it sometimes but absolutely and you know and, and uh it, it was a part that i i really enjoyed i mean i really did i mean i complain about it that's just sort of the nature of like well what do you mean i only got 30 minutes but you know i certainly didn't go well this is terrible i'm gonna hang up my cameras because i can't deal with this pressure it was like bring yeah. on bring on the pressure bring it here put it right in front of yeah. me because i need it I love that. And it's so I've been an introvert most of my life and I need this. It's, it's helping me grow so much so fast, just being, being positive about it. Cause if I was nervous about what could happen, I wouldn't even go to these jobs. I wouldn't even want to do them, but I, I, I just hold my breath, walk through the door and just see what happens and make the best of it. Well, you know, pragmatically you can, you know, there's a lot of, of, problems that can happen when you're doing this i mean just problem after problem and uh, it can be highly stressful and it can be uh challenging etc but the flip side of not doing it means that there's zero you got nothing exactly the answer is always no <laughs> yep yep you don't have I'm, I'm never going to win the lottery but that doesn't stop me from buying one ticket a week because if i don't buy a ticket i've guaranteed I'm not going to win the lottery. So I'll, 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 I'll invest a buck. Well, um, exactly. people say, you know, if I ever win the lottery, the first thing I say is, do you play the lottery? Cause most people don't on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Oh, my wife, if I come home on Wednesday without a lottery ticket, I have to get back in the car and <laughs> like, 
a missed opportunity. <laughs> yes. And I mean, we don't, we don't win anything. We don't win like a hundred bucks. We haven't won 60 bucks. I keep thinking, well, maybe that's a sign that someday we'll, we'll win something big, but um, who knows? It's a, uh, not a, not really a good retirement plan playing the lottery. It's just, <laughs> it just generally doesn't work out. Um, well, fantastic. Fantastic. Um, let me ask you about, because I got a lot of people who love to talk about gear and if I remember okay. right, you're not a real big gearhead. Uh, maybe a little. Yes, no. <laughs> if you could see my desk right now. You wouldn't say that, but so um, what, what are you shooting with these days? And what's your um, what's your? I know it's in the questionnaire, but right now, if you had to go out the door right now to go do some personal work and it could be any work you wanted to do, environmental portraiture, what would you what would you be um, traveling with? Um, Nikon D750 and uh, the Nikon 58 millimeter 1.4. Oh, I could okay. probably just have that set up every day and just make it work. Uh, mostly I have a pair of D750s and a D800 because um, I need backup for some of the jobs I do. And if you don't have it, you definitely need it. But I have, I think the lenses that I need, a handful of lenses. Um, I'm kind of over the fact of, of needing, I've, I've had that, especially when I started out, I had serious gas where I had to have everything or I couldn't do this job without this lens and I can't do that job without that lens. Right. To rent, you know, a, a different camera body for this job. I'm glad I did that and got it out of the way and had friends who own all kinds of things. So I could, my borrowing network is pretty big. So I have access to almost any PT gear. And I quickly realized that wasn't going to help me be a better photographer. That's great. That's the way to do it. However, I've had an obsession with shooting film lately since, um, I didn't do 24 frames in May <clears throat> on time, but what it did was spark my interest in film. And I have on my desk right now, one, two, three, four film cameras and a medium format film camera that I've all bought in the last month. <laughs> oh, which medium format did you get? I got a Mamiya 645 Pro TL. Oh, nice. It just came yesterday. I don't even know how to fire it yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, the nice thing about film cameras is they're really, really simple. Yes. There's no menu to have to learn. <laughs> well, a couple of these have menus, but they're, they're nothing like the 750s. <coughs> shooting no. film has taught me so much in the last month. It's affected me shooting with a digital in a, in a very big way. If I was photo king, and, and I, I am running for that position, at some point. Okay. But if I, was, yeah, if I was photo king, I would, I would tell every photographer who was starting out to enjoy your digital camera and make a bazillion photographs on it. But also, you know, I wouldn't be like didactic and say you only shoot with a film camera, but I would say also once a month, you grab a film camera and one roll of film and you go out and you treat each roll of film like it's a sheet of eight by 10. You don't click the shutter until you've got that picture right. Every yes. corner. The composition's nailed. You've metered it. You have you understand. Your, you can use your digital camera as a Polaroid. You know, take the shots with the digital. And go, oh, there's my exposure. And then transfer it to the film camera. Exactly. <laughs> um, but you do that for a year, 12 times, you will be a better photographer. You can't help but being a better photographer. I've noticed a difference in a month of doing that. Yep. I, I'm also taking a lot less images and having to call a lot less, which is I, great. I was just going to say, what film does is it slows you down. Yeah. The first month I got a digital camera, a good friend of mine, uh, his daughter was graduating from high school, and she wanted me to do her senior portraits. And I went out with her for a day and we just did this wonderful shoot. And I got back and I had 2,900 photographs. <laughs> Sounds and like a wedding day. How stupid is this? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I do a favor for my friend. And now I'm looking at, you know, and this was back in the day when, when you shot raw, 
you had to, you know, you had to have a raw converter. So converting oh, wow. 2,900 raw files, I mean, that was an afternoon of time. <clears throat> oh, it's just heavy days. Now I take very few digital photographs. I take, I take more winners than losers because I treat my digital camera like a film camera. I have no that's, desire to bang through a bunch of images. That's great. That's, you know, when I do the wedding thing, that's, that's part of it. I'll come home with a few thousand images, but that's an eight to 10 hour day mm -hmm. telling oh, a story, yeah. but I have tools to get through those, that whole workflow a lot quicker. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, I, are you using Lightroom? I'm using Lightroom to edit. I'm using photo mechanic to call and I have a, you know what you call it. It's called Modi Bodo but basically maps your keyboard key to Lightroom. Oh, okay. So I can get images mostly with my keyboard without looking and copy and paste. And it, it, I hated it. A friend highly recommended it and I hated it for the first day and thought what a waste of money, what a waste of time setting me back. And then I saw the light and now I, I, I wouldn't even edit without it. <laughs> well, that's cool. Yeah. If you're editing a high volume, of images it definitely definitely helps and it's a, it's a piece of hardware right um it's a software it's oh it's master a software. keyboard you get a silicone overlay to go over your keyboard you know if you have a mac they're pretty universal but um yeah it's a software that ma maps your keyboard to your lightroom so okay. you know my j and k keys are exposure up and down and uh things like that adjust the sliders with keys and i've got to know it so well that i don't even look at it i just look at the image and go right to the next and yeah i was watching a guy doing some editing in lightroom he had a a unit he had a a device you yeah a shuttle i think they call it yeah he had a device he was working on and you know sliders and the whole bit um, I yeah. looked at that and I thought, no, I just, that's that's not me. Yeah, I software, I, I, I that I could get behind. That sounds pretty cool. But this is pretty neat. Modibodo.com. You're doing um, doing a lot of portraits. You're doing uh, business portraits as well as uh, consumer portraits. I've been doing a ton and I really need to update this. A lot of these are from last year, but uh, yeah, I've been doing. I I did. Probably 14, 15 of these just last week. Wow. So, you know, a lot of new wow. content to put up. Um, and they won't be out, you know, for a couple of weeks in an issue, so I can't share them yet. It's frustrating shooting things and not being able to share it for another month, but I know you that's need part a, of it. One more button over here because of the volume of new work that you're doing. You need a new work button. I'm thinking of doing a, a personal, personal page and putting a lot of my film work up there. Oh, excellent. Yeah. And my long term goal is uh, eventually working film into portraits and weddings. Wonderful. Well, you're going to love that, um, that Mamiya. Oh, cool. I can't wait. The film arrives tomorrow. <laughs> what, are you, what film did you, are you shooting with it? Um, I ordered some Fuji 400 mm -hmm. and some Portrait 400 to compare, but. I'm not sure. I'm, same thing with the 35s. I've been trying out a bunch of films and seeing what I like and what works with me. I'm a, I, think. I like the Portra 160 medium format. Okay. Um, that's that's the one I've sort of singled in on. Um, and I love to try all these, these uh, different brands and different styles of film. That's kind of fun as well. But when I'm going to go shoot film, it's probably Portra. Uh, and then the... Um, then the uh, 35 millimeter. Uh, I've have a whole bunch of what uh, the gold 200. <clears throat> a friend of mine was going, well, that's consumer film. I go, I know, but it, it looks cool. I mean, it, it has that, yeah. it has that C41 blue and that C41 green that I like so much. Um, digital looks like transparency to me. Um, and it's so it's funny. I really noticed the difference now that I've been looking at a ton of film. Yeah. Yeah, the color, the color, the vibrance of the color looks like a slide film. Looks like ectochrome, sort of. Um, and what I do in my digital workflow is I use RNI, the film emulators. Okay. I'll apply that film emulator to the whole group of images that I'm working on, so that the um, 
the color, the base color palette is the same. And so okay. it sort of ties the images tighter. So that's that's been fun. So I got all the RNI filters and I use four. <laughs> well, that's usually how filters go. I have some of those from a, a different company. I've tried <laughs> a bunch of different film ones. I haven't tried RNI though. Well, yeah, and whichever, whichever ones one. work. I mean, when you're when you're done and you've uh, like you go out and do a shoot and you're all over the place, inside, outside, whatever, and then you run that RNI filter. You know, it kind of brings all the blues to the same point and all the greens to the same point. You know, so you have that color um, base palette, and I do that first, and then do the exposure and stuff over the top. Yeah. Yeah, there's something I've been paying a lot of attention to this year is consistency in my photos. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's it's one of the things that can mark us um, a little bit higher, especially with art directors and, and creative directors, because they look for that super consistency. And uh, it's really, really important. So outside or inside, do you have a studio? I don't have a physical studio yet. That's um, a long-term goal. Okay. So mostly on location. Wow. Mostly on location. I have access to my wife owns a yoga studio with a very big lobby with 20 foot ceilings that when there's nothing going on there for a few hours, I'll set up a, some seamless and <laughs> do a session. If I have to, I'll always find a place to shoot if I Excellent. need it, but I would like a studio long-term. Well, I'm going to pull out period. a couple of pictures here, and you can tell us a little bit about them, all right? Okay. Like this one here. Great, great, that, great subject, man. Great face. That was um, a guy I knew, but that was at a event, and that was under a big white function tent. And that was, yep, on the fly, just – Say, hey, what's going on? It was a cook-off. It was a fundraising cook-off to raise money for, I think, 10 polio. I think it was a rotary-sponsored event, but I was asked to show up and shoot it, and I went in with a bad attitude. I don't really want to do this, and I got there. I was like, what am I thinking? No, I need to have fun with this, and I got in everyone's face with the camera and had a ton of fun, and it showed in the images. I got really good results and used a flash bouncing off the roof of the tent to light most of this. Oh, cool. Because it was backlit, as you can see. It's daytime. It just, I love the, the night feeling of, yeah, I just love the feeling of the light coming from the back like that. Yeah. Yeah. It really makes people stand out. And I had to shoot it really shallow to sort of se separate people. Uh, brings your subject to the foreground. This is a this fun shot as well, the violin player here. Yep, that was a case where we had literally five minutes to make that happen. And I laid down on the floor. <laughs> I had to get that ceiling in there, so I laid down on the floor. Took one shot with someone holding a softbox on camera right, and he was blue. So I quickly grabbed a warming gel, threw it in the flash, and took four or five shots real quick, and that was it. Wow. And... I was still laying on the floor, and the, the, the tour that was walking tours throughout the church, because it's a historical church, uh, came walking down that aisle with minutes, like 30 seconds after I took the last shot. <laughs> That's very cool, man. Nice shot. This is fun. This one of the uh, yeah, we've... Uh, people that came into town for photographs? Yeah, he actually proposed to her on the beach and hired me to hang out and capture it. That was New Year's Day last year. Um, so he proposed to her. She said yes, and I said, hey, let's grab some photographs. Did you see that? And we have some really big beaches here, so there's, there's all kinds of options for doing photos there. You see that big gray sky? Yeah. I, I love big gray skies. I live where, when I look outside, I want to say nine times out of ten, or maybe eight times out of ten, it's just blue. And um, I know a lot of people. Oh, they love blue skies. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm over them. I want clouds. 
Uh, I oh, went over yeah. to it. I love 10 30, 11 o'clock in the morning. I, I was happy to have clouds because I could shoot photographs in basically any direction. It's a giant diffuser at that point. Yep, exactly. exactly. <laughs> like, you know, you brought your own softbox. Exactly. <laughs> Tell us about this shot. Which one are we? This is the uh, young lady. That was red chair. shot. That was. They are building a children's museum, and she's leading the charge. And that was a magazine shoot. I had about ten minutes, and she was pretty sick that day. <laughs> so we walked in and did the classic, you know, take two minutes and figure out where to set up and where to do it. So those pictures on the wall had a good color along with that rug and that chair so we grabbed the chair from behind the desk you see in the background stuck her in it um there's some big windows on camera right and i just put a big reflector on camera left and that's all natural light now i like how you captured her with a great face very comfortable very relaxed and that sense of uh, uh she's like she's in a gallery or some sort of um nice retail space their um their museum is you know it's a children's museum so they have all kinds of loud colors and their logos and all their their branding so I, I think that captured it wonderful get your portraits for you over here real quick um this one on the beach that would be my wife. <laughs> we were we were doing uh, some yoga postures. She owns a yoga studio, but we were just I was looking for something to shoot one night. I said, "Hey, let's uh, go shoot something." So that was just in between. It had gotten almost too dark to shoot, but that was in between takes. And I just I love shooting down low for some reason. Mm -hmm. And I got down on the ground and just took that. She was awaiting direction from me. So I, I just liked it. Yeah, I like it because it's interesting. Yeah. Makes you look at it and say, what's going on here? Exactly. What's happening. Talk about our good friend Tucker here. Tucker. <laughs> he didn't want to be shot. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. He uh I think we shot each other for in that portrait class for that assignment. And uh well, you know, we, we were shooting tethered, I think, in, in my office at the time. And uh, just seeing what, as you're seeing what, what we're getting, he started to see where I was going with it. So he, he loosened up a lot. And same when he shot me, once I saw where he was going, it, it almost helps the, the subject pose. So they can see the result. So Yeah, great. Up. Really, really pose. great. Now, this was uh, digital converted, right? Yeah, that was one one light, digital. I think, yeah, I think that was just one light in a gray backdrop. So talk to us a little bit about marketing. What's it like to market there in uh, St. Augustine? What are you doing uh, to get your work out in front of the people and to uh, get more and more of those weeks like you had last week? What's worked best for me, especially in a small town like this, is networking, doing doing a good job, but always being on time or early, doing what you say you're going to do and doing it extremely well, <laughs> and just being nice to people, just, you know, so people leave with a good feeling about you. Um, a lot of my jobs have come from word of mouth. Other than that... Um, Editorial jobs bring me to a lot of local businesses. I get to meet a lot of people. Um, if it goes well and they like the images, I get a call back sometimes. I'll leave business cards with people I meet and shoot with. Excellent. Uh, website is starting to gain traction, starting to get in inquiries through it. And you've got your weddings here on your blog. I'm going to encourage you to get some of that editorial stuff up on here as well. Yeah, that's you're going to see a lot of that real soon because <laughs> I got a lot. Good. Uh, Instagram? How are you doing on Instagram? That's probably what I spend the most time on. I have a uh, 
try to try to mix it up. You know, it was mostly wedding stuff for a while, but I've I've tried to add in some commercial things and a little bit of lifestyle. Very cool. Dessert shots is a is a local um, local dessert place that uh, I've been doing a ton of work for, and they put out these amazing looking desserts, and it's literally two blocks from my house. So I say hey, anything you need, I'll come over there and shoot it. So they hire me often to do do some promotional work, or if they do a you know a two thousand dollar wedding cake custom cake i'll run down the street and take a shot of it before it goes out the door <laughs> oh that's cool it helps me build my portfolio and these have my watermark because these are um some prints i just had made to hang on the wall in their shop so oh, it's nice. like four four big prints go up in there that's excellent always always a good thing to get your work up on the walls of retailers yep that, that was the first and hopefully not the last <laughs> Yeah, it's a good feeling to walk in and see it. Very cool. Well, anything, uh, this is one of the questions I'm asking folks um, who are doing these interviews with me. You've got a young person in front of you, or not necessarily young in age, but a young photographer. They've been at photography for maybe a year, two years, and they really want to get into the business. What would be your um best advice for them find a mentor of some sort and it's kind of a, say, say one more find a mentor ah. of some kind not somebody to tell you how to do everything but be honest with people find you know, the best thing that happened to me was to become friends with an established and working photographer to kind of guide me in the sense that he doesn't he didn't tell me how to do everything he would sort of lead me to a certain place and leave me alone to figure it out he understood that but um i think i got the most from working with other people, working with other photographers, reach out to a lot of people, ask them if they need help. And when they get, you know, a job that they can't do, they might hand it off to you. And that happens quite a bit. Just build a network, but shoot every day, shoot something every day and look at it and say, you know, what would you change next time? What could you do better? And if, you know, if when people say, well, I don't know anybody to photograph, I say, get out of your office, yeah. go somewhere, and you will find people. And uh, the first person might say, no, I don't want to have my picture taken. The second person may say it, but you're not going to get three no's in a row, ever. The very first assignment in Project 52, when I did it, was shoot a stranger. Yep. Yep. And you should do that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And there's great, I mean, look at, you know, you want to talk about how well that works. Look at the guy who does that humans of New York thing. Yeah. So, <laughs> he, you know, no one's killed him yet. No one's beaten him up. No one, <laughs> you know, his life hasn't been ruined because he asked somebody for a photograph and we, we, we go through all this um, fear. So if you're a people photographer and you can't find a model, go and find somebody. Now, if you only want to shoot, pretty girls that's going to be a problem because it's hard to find just you know pretty girls to photograph but if you're people photographer get out of the office there's nobody in your office get out where the people are and don't shoot the same person all the time don't have a portfolio or more than half your images are the same person or from the same session try to try to show variety yep do the do absolutely the all you can to get a to get a lot of people in your in your book and that if you're a people shooter there's no excuse for it because there are people everywhere so brian it's been great thanks for coming out on the fourth of july are did you guys have fireworks last night or are you guys doing fireworks tonight what's what's going on i believe there's some tonight downtown i'm probably going to climb up on the roof and watch them yeah i think they're uh you know we had fireworks down south of us last night from uh eight about 8 15 to 10 o'clock um <laughs> we had to have the dogs inside they were going nuts it's so, my dog's least favorite holiday 
Well, I've, my, my, I have two, two, I have three daughters, uh, and two daughters who live at home and their idea of dogs is not quite my idea of a dog, but still <laughs> they're little and I, and I, I, you grow to love them anyway, but, uh, you know, they just shake, they shake because they are chihuahua. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so they just vibrate in your arms, look at you with these big eyes going, what's going on? So we had to have them in the house last night. And I think there's probably more tonight. Hey, thanks for coming out on a holiday, my friend. Yeah, no problem. Anytime. I, I, photography great chat is one of my, my, my priorities. We, yeah. We will do this again. I, I, yeah. I'm, I will get a lot more content up and then have you look at it. <laughs> that would be great. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Brian. Talk to you soon. All right. Thanks a lot.